Well, I ripped through this book in no time at all. This series is awesome. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be reviewing the sixth book in the John Milton series written by Mark Dawson called Salvation Row. I really enjoyed this one, so let's start with uh, the plot. So the novel opens 12 years ago while John Milton is still in the employ of the elite assassination group called Group 15, which is sanctioned by uh, British intelligence where they conduct off the books operations and assassinations of uh, foreign and domestic enemies. So we find John Milton in New Orleans uh, 12 years prior, uh, just as Hurricane Katrina is about to devastate the southern coast of New Orleans. And uh, both he and a colleague, a tech wizard called Ziggy, are on assignment in New Orleans to take down two targets, which they eventually do, but it comes at a cost because Ziggy, the uh, tech guy, is badly injured in a car accident and shatters his leg, and uh, he's just hanging on to life by a thread. John Milton encounters a local family who are affected by the flooding and their house is going under the water, but they still manage to assist John in getting Ziggy uh, the assistance he needs and to get evacuated out so he can get um, uh, vital medical attention. Uh, the, as one of the brothers in the family is a vet and he actually stabilizes Ziggy and gets him ready for uh, transport. And John is very grateful for that. So this local family also has a daughter called uh, Isadora Bartholomew, and John Milton is taken uh, by her with her courage and determination and uh, how she overcomes adversity. And uh, he's very grateful for the assistance that she's given him. And he eventually uh, evacs out of uh, New Orleans, but he doesn't forget her. So uh, we fast forward now to the present day where John Milton sees uh, Izzy on a news bulletin where uh, the Lower Ninth Precinct of New Orleans uh, has uh, still, it still has the effects of the flooding, but Izzy has created a charity where uh, it enables her to start rebuilding uh, the Lower Ninth and she starts to uh, build houses from scratch and eventually houses families, uh, which uh, becomes a fast growing neighborhood and the street she builds on it, uh, becomes Salvation Row. So it gets dubbed with the same name in the title of the book. So we find uh, John Milton uh, hasn't got anything planned. Uh, he decides to uh, fly down to uh, New Orleans to help Izzy out. He feels that uh, he still owes her for the help that she gave him 12 years ago, and he decides to help her uh, build the houses. Uh, as, he, as I said, he's got no plans, he's got nothing to do, so he thinks it's a uh, worthwhile exercise. So Milton, along with some locals, are tasked with clearing off the vegetation that has uh, grown wild uh, after the flooding flood waters had receded uh, the vegetation just grew out of control and uh, it's just a battle to keep it at bay so uh, he certainly got his work cut out for him so it's not long before we uh, get to know what the whole conflict of this book is about we have a very rich real estate developer called joe babineau who's a very powerful self-made man who is a billionaire and he wants the lower ninth precinct for himself so he can put up a shopping mall and he'll do anything to make sure that that happens. Now he uh, is civilized about the whole thing to begin with. He uh, makes an offer to Izzy, a very generous offer to buy the homes uh, uh, above asking price and uh, Izzy refuses and ends up uh, taking him to court to draw out the process because it is only a matter of time before Babino gets his way and uh, demolishes the houses and builds his shopping mall. Now Izzy's logic is she's um, sweat, blood and tears to build these houses and she didn't do that only to have them bulldozed away despite what money has been offered. So she stands her ground which uh, is one of her strengths and uh, uh, what happens next is Babino loses patience because every, each time uh, a court case is heard 
the development gets delayed and costs him millions of dollars and uh, it's not long, be not long before he becomes very impatient. So he uh, ends up sending um, a, a couple of local heavies around to Salvation Row to see if they can talk some sense into Izzy and uh, they give her a warning, a polite warning to begin with and uh, they pretty much say to her, look, you need to sell or else. And uh, then they go away. It's not long before Milton becomes aware of what's happening. And uh, as you, if you've read these books, you know John Milton's not having any of it. He uh, will not let that stand. So he uh, sends Izzy and her mum and dad to safety. And he has a quiet word with these uh, two local thugs. Now they are only bottom feeder, uh, uh, druggos that uh, Babino has taken off the street to employ them but uh, it's uh, you can imagine John Milton makes short work of them and uh, uh, roughs them up a little bit and sends them back to their boss with a message and the message is pretty clear uh, in true Milton style so what we have is uh, John Babino thinks well look what, what good are these local thugs we need to um, send in the big guns. Now, this is the interesting part. Because John Milton uh, had no issues dealing with these two local thugs, Joel Babineau believes, look, he needs to get uh, someone in who can actually deal with Milton and uh, enforce Joel Babineau's advantage in obtaining the land. So what we see here is a classic plot device that is always reliable in raising the stakes. Now this uh, plot device where uh, if the villain can't get his way and he needs to pull in the big guns, we've seen this a lot of times in countless movies and uh, I can't think of all of them but I can give you a couple of examples where this plot device works really well. So John Milton, the character, he needs a challenge. He, uh, he just dispatches uh, um, his um, his message onto these local thugs with no effort at all. So Babineau uh, employs an ex-Mossad assassin who is a pure professional. He's cold, he has no emotion, he gets paid money, he eliminates people and he goes home. No, nothing more, nothing less. Now, the interesting thing about this is uh, uh, Claude Boone is uh, what he's known as, what he's named himself as, but he's actually known as R.V. Barkman. And so we can see an eventual showdown between Barkman and Milton. Now, just uh, though, coming back to those examples on how this plot device is used in films, for example, uh, we've seen so many films where this is used. So I'll use a classic one. If you remember, uh, if you're an ex-Jenner like me, if you can rem remember back to uh, the early Bruce Lee films, there was one called Way of the Dragon. Now, in that movie, Bruce Lee was dealing with uh, local thugs who were running a racket and taking advantage of a local restaurant. And uh, you'll probably remember all the fights that were held at the back of the uh, kitchen where Bruce Lee just kicked everyone's ass. And the local... Uh, local thug, the, the boss, uh, calls in Colt, uh, who is uh, uh, a, a US martial artist played by um, Chuck Norris. So what happens is this Colt is called in uh, to deal with a problem, and of course you, you know what, you know the outcome of the fight between uh, Colt and Bruce Lee. So uh, that's one example. Another example is uh, a movie called The Punisher. Uh, from 2004 starring Thomas Jane and John Travolta as the villain. So uh, Howard Saint is John Travolta's character. He uh, sends a couple of assassins to uh, try and take uh, Frank Castle out. So you have uh, one assassin who's called Harry Heck who uh, tries to uh, get rid of uh, Frank Castle and Frank Castle deals with it appropriately and quickly and then when Howard Saint becomes aware of um, the assassin's death he says right well let's call in the Russian so uh, he calls in a big Russian wrestler guy who uh, tries to take Frank Castle out and Frank Castle eventually wins so this plot device always ups the stakes and uh, this RV Barkman is truly a, uh, a match for John Milton. So I'm not going to say anything more about that. 
but uh, the climax I found was quite good and uh, it was nail biting and uh, let me tell you that John Milton did certainly meet his match. So uh, things escalate and eventually uh, you know it, it uh, without spoiling too much it is a satisfying ending which uh, it just kept me on the edge of my seat all the way through and uh, it just reinforces my uh, view of the series as being one of my favorite series of all time. Uh, I've already ordered the next book called Headhunters, book number seven, uh, which is a follow-on where R.V. Barkman makes an appearance in the next one as well. So that's going to be very interesting. Um, I noticed that he uh, has done that with a few of his books that I haven't read yet, that he's made um, a couple of two-part uh, installments, which I think is great. So it's got all the action you can expect from Mark Dawson and uh, just makes you want to read all the books back to back, which uh, you know I plan on uh, hopefully finishing them all uh, this year. I'm up to book number seven now and there's 21 of them and there's more coming. So uh, I like an author who's prolific and brings out a book pretty much every year, uh, very much like Lee Child. Uh, you can rely on the author to continue to um, uh, provide the awesome thrilling stories so there you go there's my review uh, i gave it a five star rating it was great um, i gave the previous one uh, the sort of god a five star review as well but to be perfectly honest i did think that sort of god was a little bit better uh, than salvation row only because uh, john milton went through a lot more uh, physical challenges in the sword of god um, than he did in Salvation Row. It's only a, a minor thing, but still worthy of a five-star rating. So uh, looking forward to the next book, and I'll be uh, sure to review that on the channel. As to what's coming up on the channel, I'll be doing my weekly update uh, this weekend, and I will be also hopefully filming something special which uh, is not book related, which I'll share with you all. I'm hoping to uh, do something in the next few weeks. I'm going to be probably doing another review uh, shortly as well so uh, over the next two weeks until the end of the month I'll probably sprinkle in a few more reviews and uh, I'm also thinking of doing a, uh, a top 10 of, uh, of something that uh, I've been considering um, probably going to look at my top 10 favorite childhood book series which uh, is interesting. So that'll be a real trip down memory lane. So uh, that is it from me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please put comments below. I'm always open to feedback and uh, let me know if you've started reading Mark Dawson or uh, what are you actually reading? Uh, what series do you recommend in the thriller genre? Because it is my favorite uh, genre. And uh, yeah, until next time, see you later.